Well, Stephen, I don't think I've actually sat here and stared at you. I feel a little intimidated, but not really. A little bit of sadness for me personally. Um, we're now well, we're on the second floor of the Royal MTC, your home for over 30 years. Uh, we, we would be here till tomorrow talking about everything that you've done. But right now, sitting here with me, what are you feeling? A lot of gratitude to the people who have made me look good and <laughs> shared all this time. Um, when I talk to you, it's always about the new show, the new season. This is, I guess, a man of all seasons. I want to go back to the very beginning because I didn't know too much on how you became artistic director. I always thought you were. You just had the job. But back then in 87 when you came here as an assistant and then in only two years, Stephen, you're king of the hill. What was it like at the time for you and theater? Well, it was a somewhat disturbing time in that the gentleman who hired me to be the associate artistic director, Rick McNair, who's a great guy, unfortunately was terminated after a financially disastrous season. So like in hockey, they fired the coach and hired the associate, took a chance on a one-year contract, I remember. And we determined three basic uh, cornerstones, if you will, to the plan going forward. One, we were going to improve the consistency of the work on the main stage. We were doing great shows, but sometimes not. We just wanted to have a really high level of excellence throughout the season. Uh, two, we were going to connect with the community, and that meant the community of artists. So we had a town hall meeting, and we learned a lot, and also the community at large. And last, we were going to get our financial house in order after that significant one-year deficit. It took us a few years to finally get back into the black, as they say, out of the red. And uh, we achieved that together as a team. Wow. So what was it like? I mean, you were young, or not really knowing what flavor of theater people wanted. Um, when you go back, was there a moment? Was there an experience where you said, that play is going to do well here? You know, there have been moments along the way that I've learned about more or more about our audience. I had a sense coming in because I had been the associate for two years that Manitobans, Winnipeggers especially, like three things about a play. A good story, a good story, and a good story. <laughs> <laughs> and things I learned along the way, for example, one of our subscribers in one of our phone surveys said, you know, I like to be entertained, but I want to feel smart at the same time. And that was so helpful. So things like that one learns as one goes along. All right, so we talk about the community. And I mean, all along for so many years, your connection, first of all, with the acting community. Um, you created, you know, a lot of bonds and, and hiring local actors. So talk about that. Tracy, going back to that town hall meeting that we mentioned, one of the actors said, you know, we don't get cast because directors cast people that they know. And when you hire out-of-town directors, they don't know us. So from that day forward, we invested money, which we had very little of given that previous deficit. But we said every director from out of town is going to come to Winnipeg and audition here first. And only if we can't find a person for the role will we look to the rest of Canada and again, if we can't find them in Canada, we'll look to the world. But that moved our, over time, that moved our local artists' employment here from approximately 10% of each cast to now approximately 60, 70, sometimes 80. Sometimes the entire cast is local. And people are winning those roles. I'm not advocating for anyone. I'm not saying you have to hire local artists. Directors are coming in and seeing great talent that has been nurtured, not just by us, but by all the theaters in the community. And the actors here are exceptionally, extraordinarily talented. Wow. And then I guess let's talk about playwrights. Sure. And I mean, that's always, it's a hard sell, right? Or I mean, I think for writers in general, 
how have, how have you seen, I guess, your time here help grow the playwright community? Well, we've been fortunate in that we have terrific, talented writers here. Uh, they were here before I got here, and along with the other theaters in our community, we have indeed developed many more. So I think back to Maureen Hunter, for one, who established a uh, tremendous reputation here on the main stage and at the warehouse. And uh, most recently, Jake McDonald, who right. premiered his new play, First Time Playwright. Uh, we worked on it for four years, which gives you a sense of the commitment required mm -hmm. by a writer. And I read his book and interviewed him about that book, too. Oh, great. Yeah, Perfect. so it's uh, awesome. So it's called The Cottage, and uh, it's playing to enthusiastic full houses, and it, it's terrific. We've managed to average one new play a year over the 30 years. Mm -hmm. And almost all, I think there's only one that hasn't, but almost all have gone on to second and third and fourth productions, and that's really gratifying. Successes then? Uh, the ones that immediately come to mind are uh, Picasso at the Le Pain and Gilles, Steve Martin's play, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the great musicals, Billy Elliot, um, the Drowsy Chaperone, and almost all of the new plays. I like to always give kudos to the people behind the scenes. Yes. Like your staff here that work on the workshops and the sets and designs and the lighting and the costumes. You're so right, Tracy. We have the finest artisans who are in all those wardrobe and paint and wigs and uh, props and uh, carpentry and all those shops. But we also have great administrative staff. We have amazing box office staff. You know, sometimes it's the conversation that an audience member has with one of our patron services staff that helps them enjoy the play even more. Wow. So I did mention Come From Away, and I think I was probably one of the only Winnipeggers that did not see the show, which I'm really, really upset about. But I guess I could go to Toronto still to see it. Yes. And Broadway. Uh, and Broadway. Wow, what a smashing success. We were fortunate. We wrote to the producers before it was a big hit and said, we're looking at our 60th anniversary, which is many years from now. To make it very special, may we please ask you to consider opening it here. And they said, really? Like before New York, you want it? <laughs> you want to do this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, they never said no, so they ended up opening it in New York, uh, but the Toronto production that's playing there now, thanks to our connection with Mervis Productions, which is, again, something I'm so grateful for, and we're also grateful for, uh, we were indeed able to build the Toronto production, premiere it here, and now it's still running in Toronto. And what is it about that play, do you think, Stephen, that resonates? It's about uh, people being generous in a time of incredible stress. And what I love about the direction, Christopher Ashley won a Tony Award, and your listeners who have seen the play, uh, they will realize, as I did after Christopher described it to me, um, that in the same way that the play is about people being helpful in times of great stress, the actors themselves are helpful to each other. Christopher asked them, to always help the other actor with a chair or a prop. So nobody ever picks up their own chair and puts it down for themselves. It's always another actor who helps them with the chair or brings on a prop and hands it to them. So that kind of generosity is woven through the entire play. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. And then you wouldn't know that if you don't have those little nuances. And I think that's what makes it even more intimate. And that's something about live theater that we'll always cherish, is to have that intimacy with the actors and with the play that the playwright, playwright has written and the director has directed. Yeah, you asked about the future, and it's, there's a lot to be optimistic. The art form itself is growing. The technology is helping both on stage with incredible visuals, but also off stage with uh, marketing, with uh, audience surveys, with and by audience surveys, I don't mean, here's a list of plays, please tell us the ones you like. I mean, really finding out what about the experiences of interest or of value to different segments of our audience. 
yeah. And I guess that's the beauty of social media and the immediacy. So you can do it now, not back in 87 where it would be handwritten and it would take you six months to find all of that. Yeah. But so, so it's a more competitive landscape. Yes, definitely. It always gets more competitive. I haven't seen it get less competitive ever. So first people were worried about the VCR and people staying home and watching movies at home. And now, of course, everyone's worried about Netflix and all the other platforms that provide libraries full of videos and movies and television shows. But as you say, there is nothing like <clears throat> the live experience. No, there isn't. So I remember a big play here in Winnipeg that had, I guess, more so than the play, it was the actor that you brought in. Hamlet? Oh, uh, With Hamlet. With a certain <coughs> Keanu Reeves? Keanu Reeves. I mean, the, the beauty of that particular uh, project was that, for the most part, he wasn't as well known no. uh, before he agreed. Um, but when Speed came out, the whole world changed, and all of a sudden, <laughs> we had a thousand people subscribing to make sure they got in right. from England and Asia and all over now, the world. Now, can you imagine that there was social media back then? Like, you would have been sold out for the whole year. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was a great uh, honor to welcome him. He was a tremendous person, as well as one of the finest Hamlets I've ever seen. Oh, Stephen, there's so many gifts that you've given Winnipeg. Um, we're sad you're leaving, but I'm sure that you're going to be back in some way, shape, or form, visiting. You know, any gifts that I may have given to Winnipeg have been doubly uh, given to me. I know that I didn't make Royal MTC, but Royal MTC sure made me. Oh, well, we thank you, Sir Stephen, and all the best to you and your wife and family in the future. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for all your support over the years. You're so welcome.